morning, or rather, Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> one thirty in the afternoon, and it's morning to some of us, right? It's hi, Connie. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to today's training. It's, the question is, is your worth transactional? Are you treating your worth as a transaction? Are you trying to earn worth by pleasing other people, getting their approval, giving them what they want? By enabling them or avoiding conflict, not rocking the boat, not showing up as who you are, in hopes that they'll like you. This is all signals of transactionalism or what we do to get love and a sense of connection with other people. Really, really important to understand that when we deal with these kinds of behaviors like people pleasing, fixing, controlling, avoidance, and stuff like that in codependency, we're actually trying to meet our needs. We're trying to meet our needs in the way we have figured out sometimes works, right? Because if you're dealing with a narcissistic or abusive person, someone who is either pathologically or consistently neglectful of who you are, your feelings, your individuality, your personhood, you're going to be experiencing that side of transactionalism. And to survive that, you're going to try to get them to like you. It's Technically, it's called fawning. Now, the brain has four responses to threat. It can fight the threat, it can run from the, fl the threat, it can, f it can freeze, like play dead, or it can fawn. And fawning is where we try to please the person, right? We try to become appealing to them so they'll keep us around and we'll be valuable to them. This is where that transactionalism stems from. This is where it shows up. Now, to understand value, you need to understand that there's three types of value. And today we'll be dealing with the first type of value, which is transactional value. The other two are principal value and innate value. You actually need all three of these values in order to have a concrete, resilient sense of self-confidence and personhood. You need all three. So transactional value isn't necessarily wrong or bad. It's actually useful, but it has a very narrow context in which it's appropriate to be in. But the real challenge we have here as codependence is our value has been rooted in transactionalism, in the earning of love, in the earning of approval, in the earning of permission to be ourselves, to have needs and wants, feelings, complaints, limits, and boundaries. We've been trained to externally seek value through other people's approval. This is also a really good reason why rejection has the amount of power it has in your life. I mean, how many of you guys, and you comment below, fear rejection like it's a punch in the gut. It devastates your sense of self. You've, you kind of collapse in on yourself when you're rejected or you disappoint someone, you upset them. How does that feel to you? What comes up for you in those experiences? And comment below and let me know because then we can have a conversation about those, kind of ex those kinds of experiences because they're going to happen in life. And the way we react to them is really dependent on how we value ourselves. If, we're va if we're, our sense of worth is configured or anchored in what's called transactional value, rejection and disappointing other people is going to be really intense. But if our sense of value is rooted in our innate beingness, i.e. I'm valuable because I exist, then it actually doesn't have that kind of weight. It doesn't crush us. Instead, we might have some disappointment, some sadness about it, or we may be entirely indifferent to it because it really doesn't matter to our lives. In fact, you're going to find that most rejection doesn't define anything. It, it's actually pretty um, non-important to the long-term happiness you can have in your life. So transactional value. This, I want you to know that there's certain ways transactional value shows up. So you can take this into your life today and start seeing if you are coming from transactional value, if others are coming from transactional value, and if you're even treating yourself from that angle of transactional value, being really conditional with your love for yourself. Um, common ways this shows up is being valued for the benefit you bring to the table. So people like what you do. They like what you bring or, or features that, that you have, but they don't really appreciate, identify with, or nurture you. You know, they, they don't hang out with you because they like you. They hang out with you because you bring the cookies. You know, that would be the benefit you bring. Or you have a certain status that they want to have a part in, that kind of stuff. 
really, really important to understand that that's a transactional benefit there. And that tends to leave us uh, empty, feeling unseen and invisible and unwanted or used in those experiences. Second signal you're dealing with a transactional relationship or you're in a transaction with someone is that your mistakes are treated as though they are a result of who you are. Like you made the mistake, that means there's something wrong with you. If you weren't this way, um, if there wasn't a problem with you, you wouldn't have made this mistake. So mistakes are attached to person and identity rather than to skill set and to understanding. And that makes mistakes feel really fatal, right? If, if I make a mistake and that means I'm a worthless person, <laughs> we're going to be terrorized by this. This is going to be paralyzing for us. This is where perfectionism and hypervigilance around behavior and trying to get things right and control outcomes stems from. Let's see, Shelley says, my sense of worth and identity based on doing for others and none of it is appreciated that definitely get rejected from yeah see that's transactionalism right there it's definitely based on doing for others it's what do I do for them and how do they feel about it because if they feel really good about what I did for them then I can feel really good about myself right but if I did something and they didn't like it or they criticized it then I feel bad about myself big signals for transactional worth right there this this actually applies really well to the third uh, element of identifying transactional values, your identity is enmeshed with the results and skills and what you do. So your value and who you are is based on what you do rather than on your presence, rather than on your existence. Okay, Very, very important different difference there because if you're going to actually heal and, and exit the need to be codependent and become who you are, your value has to move from transactionalism to beingness or innate value. Another signal that transactional value is happening for you in your relationships, you're being ignored when you contribute something that's an expression of you but doesn't necessarily benefit them. Like you share something you made. Like, hey, look, I made this thing. And they're like, right, yeah, you know, where's my cookies? That's transactionalism happening. Um, people tend to be emphasize the benefits they get from you, your attributes. You're so beautiful. I'm so lucky to have a beautiful person in my life or it's just amazing what you do for me and how you make me feel. These are really important signals that there's some sort of transaction going on because you don't make anybody feel anything, by the way. People feel what they feel based on their psychological programming and conditioning and their history. You might inspire that feeling in them with your simple existence, but that's still theirs to manage. So you're not being valued for your presence. You're not being valued for your person or for your being. Very important to start looking at that. How am I being valued by the people in my life? Do they value what I do or do they appreciate that I'm here? Do they spend time with me because I exist? Because they like me? Do they care about how I feel? Those are really, those are some of the strongest indicators that someone actually values you as they put time and attention into those things. And then... The, the next quality is the dominant time you get praise, attention, affection, um, and, and belonging, a sense of belonging, is after you've done something they like. That's when you get the love bombing. That's when you get the experience of their approval. But outside of that, it's just kind of like you don't exist. You know, you're, you're, you're not really there. It doesn't really matter. Unless you do something, then they get attention. This is why we feel invisible in our relationships is because we're not being valued for who we are. <laughs> we're being valued for what we do. So we only exist in this person's mind as something worth time and attention to when we make them feel a certain way. Guys, very, very important to understand that when you feel invisible or you feel empty or you feel ignored, it's not because there's something wrong with you. It's not because you didn't do something right. Those would be echoes of transactional love. It's because they're not showing up in a way that nurtures that. The relationship isn't supporting that in you. It's a valid feeling. You don't have to gaslight yourself and, and invalidate your experiences anymore. You can say, I feel this way and it matters and it needs to be discussed. And if the people involved in this experience don't care, don't want to discuss it, you've got a huge red flag there. Because people that really do care about you are going to discuss those things with you. You're going to have those kinds of conversations 
Because the focus is I care about how you feel and your well-being, your happiness. The focus is I don't care because I just want to get what I want out of you. That would be the transactional relationship right there. Now, guys, this kind of transactional value is central to the narcissistic codependent relationship. In fact, the transaction is the source of value the codependent um, it's a place in which the codependent gets their sense of value, their identity, their importance, their purpose comes from the transaction, especially with how the narcissistic person or the other person, the consumer in this dynamic, receives it. Okay, So if they reject it, then you feel like you're worthless. But if they accept it, they give you approval, then you suddenly you feel like, you're valuable, you're finally seen, you're finally being loved. This is why love bombing is such a euphoric and powerful experience for codependents is because they're finally feeling seen. Their core needs are being met and nourished that have been starving for so long. It's why it creates this euphoria. We get into this weird fog, this, this inexplicable attraction to this person despite how they treat us. That love bombing is what we crave. This is one of the roots of love addiction, which comes through uh, that love bombing happening intermittently through the relationship. So we get these really big highs and these really big lows, and we get hooked on that that um, feast and famine order of love in our lives. So it's really, really important to understand that um, consumer supply relationships, narcissistic codependent relationships, toxic people or unavailable people, uh, connecting with a codependent, you're going to struggle with this transactionalism because it's going to keep you trapped. Real love doesn't have a transactional component. Real love is about embracing and receiving and being received for who you are as you are. They don't have an expectation that you need to show up a certain way for them to give you love. In other words, they're like, yeah, I love you because of who you are. I'm, I'm grateful you exist. That's the difference here. We're going to talk more about innate value and what real love looks like in coming trainings. But today, it's really about understanding, am I in a transactional experience? Am I dealing with a transactional person? Am I being transactional with myself? The way that shows up is if you get angry at yourself for making mistakes and you, you pull away love and approval and value from yourself if you make mistakes or if you disappoint someone. Another way transactional value shows up with ourselves is we don't say no to things we don't want. We say yes to them because we want to please the other person. Very, very important. None of this is necessarily um, indicates there's something wrong with who you are. What it does indicate is that you've had to survive love starvation. You've had to survive transactionalism so long that you don't have contact with real love yet. So... It's important to start looking at that and identifying where you're treating yourself with transactionalism and where you're either having a transactional experience with another person or they're doing the same with you or you're both doing it to each other because not just narcissists are transactional, codependents are too. Uh, we tend to withhold love and breed resentment in response to not getting what we want the way we want it either. There is a dark side to codependency that way and we have to be really mindful of how we show up in relationships and how we have a projected fantasy onto who people should be, the way we think they should be, versus who they are. And we've got to learn how to receive people as they are and connect with them that way through vulnerability, honesty, and um, transparency that way. Okay? So, guys, fundamentally, codependency is about getting your needs met. Transactionalism is one of the ways in which people tend to get their needs met. We can evolve that to connection-based um, reciprocation where needs are valued by yourself and the other person. And so there is a contribution, a reciprocity that develops between you and them that allows you to feel fulfilled, seen, nurtured, valued, appreciated, and cherished because of who you are. And it all starts with understanding what innate value is. And we'll get in that into a different training. So guys, if you're struggling with transactional value, you're struggling to know who you are, what your value is, and you want to break free of this kind of codependent experience and actually begin to experience real love and connection with yourself and then with others, I invite you to apply for the happiness strategy. We start in less than six days. I've got four seats open. You need to apply ASAP so I can 
get, we can get, have our consult and get you into the program. You can do that by just clicking the link above. If you're on Facebook, the link below on YouTube, and letting me and just applying for it, and then we'll schedule a uh, consult and get you in on it. So, guys, th let me know what you got out of today's training. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and let me know below. If you're on Facebook, let me know below. Guys, I do these trainings three times a week, usually Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. If there's a topic you want me to put uh, training out on, feel free to mention it below. Otherwise, apply for the happiness strategy. Let's break you out of your transactional value, get you connected back to your innate value, voice, and vision, and help heal the trauma that stands between you and your happiness. Do that in a 13-week process. With that, I'm going to be excited to have you as a student in that course. Otherwise, guys, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. And remember that you're worth knowing, loving, and keeping. I really mean that. It's a very important term because you think about it. Transactionalism is all about being used. But being known, loved, and kept for who you are, that's where we're going. That's your future. I was on the phone last night with a client um, really late. <laughs> because they, they had a, uh, a crisis, and so we were speaking about what was going on for them in that, and it really kept coming back to that sense of value, because when we're in love addiction or we're struggling to exit a narcissistic or abusive relationship, we have to retrieve our value back from that relationship, back from that person. When we are able to do that, we start feeling differently, we start thinking differently, then we start choosing and acting differently, and that means different results. And that's what this client's beginning to see. After a lot of work and a lot of courage, they're beginning to see that they really are worth it. They don't need this relationship anymore to find their value. Their value is already within them. And if that appeals to you, the happiness strategy is exactly what you're looking for. Okay? It's designed specifically to get you back to your value, voice, and vision so you can be happy and free of codependency and free of the trauma of these kinds of transactional relationships and the emptiness and loneliness that come with them. So yes, you can heal and be happy. The pathway's there, I can show you how to do it. And you can go out and kick some butt in your life. Okay guys, appreciate you again. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Be safe out there, especially if you're here in Boise, the weather's kind of nasty. And remember again that you're worth knowing, loving, and keeping. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.